Welcome to Cindy's Bookshelf, where I choose special stories from my very own shelf to share with you and your families. The special story I chose to share is titled Glub, the Baby Dinosaur. Written and illustrated by Michael Salmon. Trevor, the caveman and his pet rat, Pergy, sat in the sun and watched the creatures in the swamp below. A large Apatosaurus splashed into the water, looking for juicy water weeds to eat. On the bank, a lazy Rhynchosaurus lay in the oozing mud, snipping and chopping at a tree fern with its scissor-like teeth. A Dimorthodon circled overhead, looking for its next meal. It was a normal day in the swamp. Trevor and Pergy were looking for new plants for their garden. We'd better keep going, said Trevor, getting slowly to his feet. No use lazing about in the sun all day like some, uh, ouch. Trevor had stubbed his toe on a strange looking stone. It rolled off the rock shelf and fell with a plop into the middle of a cycad. Trevor hopped about clutching his toe. Pergy scrambled down to examine the stone. It was a most unusual colour. Trevor followed, limping and grumbling. Ker-thump, ker-thump. The stone started to rock back and forth. Pergy and Trevor stared at it in amazement. It's an egg, cried Trevor, as it broke in two with a loud crack. Out peeped a baby dinosaur. Glub, glub, it gargled. Trevor and Pergy had never seen such a dinosaur before. It was tiny. Glub, glub, said the dinosaur and clung to Trevor's leg. It thinks you're its mother, chuckled Pergy. Trevor went pink with pleasure. Tilly remembered his sore toe. I'm certainly not its mother, he snapped. Now listen, Glub, your mother will be back soon. You just wait here. But Glub would not let go. Glub, it cried. Quickly, let's take it down to the swamp, whispered Pergy. Perhaps we can find its mother, but every animal they saw was somehow wrong. You haven't got spikes along your back, so you can't be a polycanthus. And you haven't got wings, so you're not a ramp for rhynchus. Your legs are too short to be Solorosaurus. You haven't got a horn on your nose, so you're obviously not a monoclonus. And you're not an Adaphosaurus because you haven't got a big fin on your back. Trevor and Pergy looked everywhere, but there wasn't a single creature that looked like Glub. You haven't got sharp enough teeth to be an Anortholestes. Or a duckbill like the Anatosaurus. Or a frilly collar with long pointed spikes like the Sterocosaurus. Your tummy isn't fat enough for a Alistosaurus. And you don't have an extra long neck like a Tenostrophius. But Glub didn't mind. He was happy with Trevor and Pergy. You'll have to take it home, said Pergy. You can't leave the poor little thing alone all night. Trevor glared at Glub. Dinosaurs always meant trouble. Glub grinned at him. Oh, all right then, said Trevor. It can stay in the cave tonight, but that's all. The moment they reached the cave, Glub rushed over to Pergy's vegetable stew and gobbled up the lot. Glubber, 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 sighed the happy little dinosaur, licking his lips. He had been starving. Trevor was furious. You, you... Glub rubbed his tummy and settled down to sleep on Trevor's bed with a contented Glub. You sleep over there, you greedy little dinosaur, roared Trevor. I've been looking forward to that stew all day. You can use those leaves, said Pergy, pointing at a pile of fern leaves near the entrance to the cave. It was almost midnight when a terrible cry echoed around the cave. Glub! Trevor tumbled out of bed and fell onto his club. Pergy fumbled about for a light. What is it? What's happening? mumbled Trevor. It was Glub. Tears were running down his little snout and he shivered with fear. After all, this was his first night out of the egg. Glub cried and cried and nothing Trevor or Pergy could do would make him stop till Trevor finally gave in. All right, you can sleep on my bed, he said warily. Glub snuggled up against Trevor's toes. Trevor was surprised at how heavy he was. For a baby dinosaur, it weighs a lot, he thought sleepily. I wonder what it will grow up to be. 
Glub grew and grew and kept on growing. He was a very playful young dinosaur and he jumped about the cave making an awful mess. Trevor and Pergy spent most of their time struggling up the mountain with loads of vegetables for Glub's meals. This has gone far enough, moaned Trevor, when he found his bed in pieces. Glub is old enough to look after itself. Besides, if it gets any bigger, we won't be able to get it out of the cave. Trevor looked at Glub as sternly as he could. Tomorrow we're going to find you a new home, he said. Glub! Glub didn't understand. He was enjoying life in the cave. Next day, Trevor and Pergy led the young dinosaur down the mountain. Glub was very upset. Look, said Trevor, you could make yourself a nice home under one of those rock ledges. Or how about a nice warm tree fern nest? Glub shook his head and stamped his foot. Glump! He stamped so hard that the earth gave way beneath them and they began to stumble down the slope, grabbing at ferns as they fell. Splosh! They landed in a thick, gooey green slime at the bottom of a ravine. Gl gl glub? Glub was frightened. The slime was up to his waist, and the more he struggled, the deeper he sank. We'll never get out of this muck, wailed Trevor, catching sight of some dinosaur bones. Pergy wiped the slime from his eyes. It was up to his neck. Glub, cried Glub at the top of his voice. From the top of the cliff came a familiar sound. Glub, glub. It must be an echo, said Trevor looking up. But it wasn't. A huge dinosaur was looking down at them. It's a Brachiosaurus, whispered Pergy. One of the biggest dinosaurs around. It's Glub's mother, cried Trevor. The huge dinosaur reached down to nuzzle her baby. Glub flung his arms around her long neck and hung on tightly. Trevor just managed to grab Glub's tail as a young dinosaur was lifted out of the slime. Pergy clung to Trevor's foot. The Brachiosaurus lifted them easily with her strong neck and let them down gently onto some springy cycads. Glumble glub, she snuffled as she licked her baby clean. Trevor and Pergy had to clean themselves as best they could, but they didn't mind. Glub had found his mother. Come back and see you soon, called Pergy as they waved goodbye to the dinosaurs. He would have said more, but Trevor had clamped a hand over his mouth. Glub, glub, glubber, called Glub. Do you think that means yes? Asked Trevor nervously. That's the end of the story. If you'd like to hear more stories from my bookshelf, please like and subscribe for more videos. You can find more stories from Michael Salmon online, in store or at your local library. You can also order some signed copies from Michael Salmon's collection. Links are in the description.